On today's episode of the Regression to the Mean podcast, we have our week 12 running back rankings. It is a Thanksgiving edition of the Regression to the Mean podcast, and it's a solo edition. Aiden and Keegan are already traveling. They're already doing a bunch of Thanksgiving stuff, but the show goes on. This is one of the biggest football weeks of the year. Every year I'm reminded of how much I love Thanksgiving, not only because I'm coming together with family, not only am I eating good food, I'm watching a ton of football, and we have a loaded Thursday slate. We have Black Friday football, and we have Sunday and Monday games. This might be one of the best football weeks of the year, and we know that this is a crucial week for all of you as you gear up for the fantasy football playoffs. Week 12 running back rankings. As always, these rankings are PPR format. You can go ahead and take a look at these in the description of the show notes below. If you have any specific start sit questions, feel free to drop that in the comments of our YouTube channel. Again, the first tier here is Christian McCaffrey, Austin Eckler, and Jameer Gibbs. Major notes here is Jameer Gibbs. I've got him two spots ahead of expert consensus rankings over on Fantasy Pros. He has the number one most points per game at running back over the last month with the number two usage. At this point, I don't really see how you can have him outside of the top three rest of season, even with David Montgomery factoring in. The underlying metrics are incredible, and then when you turn on the tape or you watch him on Sundays, he passes pretty much every single eye test. Hard to really move Jameer Gibbs out of that top three, considering what he's been able to do. Next tier of running backs that I have here, I've got DeAndre Swift at four, Rashad White at five, Alvin Kamara, and Tony Pollard at seven. DeAndre Swift, I've got him three spots ahead of expert consensus rankings. Lots of the Goddard passes. Uh, if you're familiar with how the Eagles run their offense, they run a lot of like uh, screen passes to Dallas Goddard. A lot of that went to DeAndre Swift last Sunday, especially in the second half, and he really unlocked that offense, picked up a lot of tough yards, and was really explosive. I expect him to be used heavily in the pass game moving forward. This matchup is juicy versus a Bills defense that just got gashed by Brees Hall out of the backfield as a pass catcher. Mix up, throw in the pace, throw in the fact this is going to be probably a high-scoring game. Uh, I think you could have fireworks for DeAndre Swift. I've got Rashad White. Seven spots ahead of expert consensus rankings at running back five. He's got the RB4 usage in the RB3 production over the past three months, over the past four weeks, over the past month. Elite usage, production, and he's playing in an up and pace matchup against the bottom five. Rush defense, sign me up. And then Tony Pollard here. I've got him three spots ahead of expert consensus rankings. His underlying efficiency metrics are starting to improve. And the role remains pretty good. He gets pretty much all the valuable touches in this offense. Uh, the Cowboys, though, have become extremely pass happy since they've come out of their bye. If Pollard sees, you know, four plus, five plus targets per game, he's going to be in RB1 land rest of season. If he doesn't get that role in the pass game, you're basically praying for a touchdown. So I think you're going to need to see him involved in the passing game. This is a great matchup this week against the Commanders. It projects to be super up in pace, and their, their defense isn't good against running backs. So I love that. The next tier that I have here is Derek Henry at seven, Josh Jacobs at eight, Travis Etienne at nine, and Jonathan Taylor here at 10. So reasoning here are, are, are guys that are sliding up and down my rankings. I've got Derrick Henry here seven spots ahead of expert consensus rankings. So-so usage and production over the past month, but the King will face off against a rush defense that has surrendered the fourth most rush yard this season to running backs in Carolina. That matchup, plus the fact that Titans are four-point favorites and Derrick Henry averages 19 fantasy points per game when the Titans win, makes me super bullish on the King's prospects. Travis Etienne, I've got him seven spots ahead of down. I've got him seven spots down against expert consensus rankings. His usage has been good. His efficiency has been, been pretty much declining since he had that massive game uh, in London. I think he had a good follow-up after that, but he's been averaging around close to eight PPR points per game over the past three games. This isn't an amazing matchup against Houston otherwise. Obviously, you're going to start him if you have him. I just don't understand why they continue to put him in the top three, top four range. I think that place belongs to Jameer Gibbs, in my opinion. Last faller in this range is Jonathan Taylor. I've got Jonathan Taylor down five spots 
um, against expert consensus rankings. He's had great usage, eh, so-so efficiencies, probably a positive regression candidate. This is a bit of a tough matchup this week against Tampa Bay. I'm expecting him to look good coming out of the bye, and this is a, supposed to be a pretty good, great pace environment game. Um, I just like guys more than him this week. I, I'm starting him. He's still an RB1. It's not like I'm super down on Taylor by any means, but I'd rather start Rashad White, which sounds crazy, all things considered, but that's that's where I'm out. All hail my king, Shade. Next tier, guys, I have here Saquon Barkley at RB11, Bijan Robinson at RB12, Brees Hall at RB13, David Montgomery at RB14, Isaiah Pacheco at RB15. Love the usage for Saquon Barkley right now. However, it's, I don't know, I don't, was the Tommy DeVito game an aberration, right? Like, that's the question. Saquon looked fantastic as a receiver. We all know the ability he has in the past game. Uh, it was great to see him leveraged and utilized there. He had two touchdowns uh, as a pass catcher, and he's just an excellent running back when he's given space. You're going to see amazing usage. The production's going to be pretty good. I just I, This game's going to be a really slow-paced game. He's going to have to score a touchdown to hit home. I'm not down on Saquon per se rest of the season. This is tough. A lot of positive buzz that Bijan is going to continue to see an uptick in usage. It seems like Arthur Smith's been alluding to it. Uh, coming out of the bye, this is kind of setting up for Bijan to, to have a really strong end of the fantasy season. I have David Montgomery here down two spots at running back 14. Uh, he's a negative regression candidate. He's had the RB28 usage over the past month with the RB8 production. Uh, he's had some big plays hit home. He saw his he saw his role reduce last week when the Lions were in catch-up mode, down a couple scores against the Bears. I still think he's playing at an extremely high level, and he's a fantastic player, but just be reticent uh, about the usage. We're about halfway here through the running back rankings. We appreciate you, as always, for being a part of this community, watching these videos, engaging with us in the comments. If you haven't had a chance yet and you're new to this channel or you've came back to these videos a couple of times, if you're part of the 70% of the people that watch these videos and don't subscribe to our channel, go ahead, subscribe to this channel. It's the number one way you can support us. The channel is completely free. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. That's our goal before the end of the season. We'd love to make that happen, but we can't do it without you. And the next tier, kicking things off, RB16, Raheem Mostert, RB17, Kieran Williams, RB18, Ramondre Stevenson, RB19, Jalen Warren, RB20, Zach Charbonnet, RB21, Devin Singletary, RB22, Joe Mixon. Kyron Williams is the big one in this range. I've got him 12 spots ahead of expert consensus rankings. King Kyron is back, but he is back with big questions. Does he retain the same elite usage? He had one of the best roles in fantasy football before he got hurt in terms of goal line, pass catching, just always on the field. And then how healthy is he? He's coming off a high ankle sprain. I don't know if he required surgery, but he hasn't played in five weeks. So outside of this, this is outside of those questions, which are very real, right? Uh, this is a juicy matchup. They released Daryl Henderson and re-signed him to his, the practice squad. So you have to think Kyron Williams is going to see the, the bulk of the touches. I, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, Jalen Warren, running back 19. He's a negative regression candidate as well. That's what happens when you have nine carries and rush for 130 yards. Uh, the, the, the usage is kind of a mystery here with the new offensive coordinator. You have to imagine this means more looks for Warren. I don't think they'd fire Canada and say, hey, let's just give Najee the ball more. I feel like Warren's going to consolidate. Uh, Najee's not going anywhere, but I just think you're going to see more usage for Warren. They probably want to find that right balance because he's just been so good um, when used correctly. You don't want to like wear him down like we've seen with Tony Pollard this year. This is a plus matchup, though, versus Cincy, so I'd be pretty excited. I'm pretty high on Zach Charbonnet this week, too. Lots of questions about whether or not you can start him. Absolutely start him. I think he's going to see 80 85% of the snaps. Wouldn't be shocked if he saw 90% of the touches. He's very involved as a pass catcher. I've got him higher over three and a half receptions over on Underdog Fantasy. In the Pick'em Lobby, you should go check that out. Promo code RTM. Um, I'm I'm pretty bullish on Charbonnet. I don't know if it's going to look super pretty or be super efficient, but given the touches and the role in the pass catching in the receiving game, I just think he'll be able to hit home and score, what, 12, 13 fantasy points. Devin Singletary is a major question here, too. I've got him at running back 21. Uh, Damian Pierce is on track to play this week. 
major questions about their usage together moving forward. I believe Singletary is going to remain the lead back, but you have to imagine that Pierce is going to eat into some of this ridiculous usage that Singletary's had. So keep your eyes out for that. This isn't an amazing matchup against Jacksonville. They've been pretty good against the run this year, but you probably want to keep him in your lineup, but just temper expectations with Pierce back. Joe Mixon running back 22. Uh, he's been on a heater the past month, but it remains to be seen what this offense is going to look like with Jake Browning. I think they're going to play slower. Maybe they're a little more run heavy. I'm not quite certain, but I do think Mixon is going to see an uptick in the pass catching game. I think, I think he's going to see an uptick in his pass catching usage. I just imagine Browning's going to check it down a decent amount to Mixon. Uh, However, that uptick in pass volume is probably going to negate a uh, decrease in, in goal line opportunities. I just think the Bengals are going to score less touchdowns. The next tier of guys that I have here, running back 23, Javante Williams, running back 24, Brian Robinson, running back 25, AJ Dillon, running back 26, Jerome Ford, running back 27, Kareem Hunt, running back 28, James Conner, running back 29. James Cook, running back 30, Gus Edwards. Um, how all these guys are, I, I, Cook is very interesting. Um, I'm, who I have at running back 29 here. Uh, really good usage in his first game with the new OC. However, this is a brutal matchup with the Philadelphia Eagles, who've been great against the run all season. However, the Chiefs rush for like 120 yards against them in the first half. So I don't, I don't really know where to go here. I do think Cook is someone you're probably going to have to keep in your starting lineup after being used so frequently last week and, and looking just damn good in the process. I was pulling up the stats. I think James Cook is like fifth in rush yards this season. Like he, he's going to rush for over a thousand yards. So as much as people want to hand ring and, get upset about James Cook or have hot takes. He, he's been pretty good this year. We're just really missing the touchdowns from him. Hard for him to hit home, in my opinion, unless he's catching passes against Philadelphia. A.J. Dillon running back 20, 25. It's a tough matchup, but would he get 15 to 20 touches in this game and a bunch of receptions? It's it's definitely on the menu. If they're you know, within five yards of a touchdown, if they're at the goal line situations, he's going to be the guy. So Detroit's been good against the run. They're more of a pass funnel offense. I think the receivers are in a better specific, better position here. That's why I have Christian Watson higher than a touchdown, either rushing or receiving uh, over there on underdog promo code RTM. But I don't know. I mean, you're, you're going to probably have to start Dylan confidently just based off of usage, but temper expectations based off efficiency. And then Brian Robinson, who I have here at running back 24, he's a negative regression candidate. And this is a tough matchup against Dallas. So I'm not going to fade B-Rob because he's the man, but I don't know if he's going to be the running back nine rest of season. This next range of guys that I have here, it, it's just tough to really figure out what to do with them. Uh, I've got Najee Harris running back 31, Alexander Madison running back 32, Ty Chandler at 33, Keaton Mitchell 34, Ty J Spears 35. Najee, I, I just think Warren's going to continue to eat his touches, even though Najee's been fine this year. Madison continues to have a good role. Middling production keeps fumbling. This is a tough matchup versus Chicago. I think Ty Chandler's interesting. Kevin O'Connell. The head coach for the Vikings came out and said, we want to hold our guys accountable when asked about Madison's fumblings. You have to imagine Ty Chandler is going to see a pickup in some usage. Keaton Mitchell is very exciting. Um, Chargers rush defense is not good. He saw an uptick in snaps, carries, and usage. I hopefully, hopefully we see a decreased role for Justice Hill, and this consolidates into a Mitchell Gus Edwards backfield. I think that's best case scenario here for fantasy. Um, I think Mitchell's just shot out of a cannon. Special speed. Uh, so I, I'm excited to see Mitchell this week. Ty J Spears, someone I love. Great matchup. Very high on the Kings, so I can't be super high on Spears. But he has a little bit of standalone value from week to week, especially in good matchups. The last tier of guys that I have here, running back 36, Khalil Herbert, running back 37, Jarek McKinnon, running back 38, Royce Freeman, running back 39, Tyler Algier, running back 42, Hubbard, 41, Zeke, 42, Miles Sanders. 
kick things off saying 43 running backs. It's actually 42. I shortchanged you. I'm sorry, meme team. I, I, ha- I had to do it. Um, Khalil Herbert's someone who's standing out here. I don't, I don't know what to do with him. It's a tough matchup against Minnesota. They've been good against the run. Herbert looked good once Foreman went down. Roshan's always in play here. I do just... I'm just drawn to the natural ability of Herbert. I just think he's the guy moving forward uh, that you want to have. I mean, Royce Freeman stands out as an interesting guy here against Arizona in this bottom tier. If I had to like pick maybe one guy that could have a nice week, uh, Freeman running back 38 here in my rankings. I have got him six spots ahead of expert consensus rankings. He looked awesome as a lead back last week. Uh, I expect King Kyron to take the lion's share as the touches, but Freeman is the rec backup to Kyron. And I think he could get some touches in a juicy matchup versus Arizona. And that if anything happens to Kyron, I think Freeman is the guy that you want, in my opinion. I, I have Jet McKinnon six spots ahead of expert consensus rankings too here. Why do I have Jet high? This is a great matchup against the Raiders. I think that Pacheco looks good. He looks solid. He look, Probably the best game he's had all year. Uh, against the Eagles, which is a phenomenal rush defense. I just think as the year goes along, Reed's just going to have to figure out a way to devise opportunities for players worth targeting in this offense. And Jarek McKinnon's shown time and time again that he's a weapon in the pass game. I don't really believe in these Kansas City receivers at all, so I wouldn't be shocked if we saw an uptick in McKinnon usage. But that's it. That's the top 42 here. Um, Top 42. That was a quick 15 minutes. Wow, I just, I feel I feel tired. We moved through that quickly. Uh, it's weird not having Aiden and Keegan here. Um, let me know if you have any specific start sit questions. Drop that in the comments below. Shoot us anything on Twitter. We're always engaging there. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Enjoy Thanksgiving. You know, if you can sneak away and watch 10 hours of football, or what is it, 9.30 Pacific Standard Time to like 8. Yeah, it's like 12 hours of football. If you can get away with it, do it the best way to celebrate the holiday if not you know you know hug your loved ones eat some good food enjoy life it's too short not to thank you everybody for tuning in until next time